Hello readers, our next book of the day is The Can Man, written by Laurel E. Williams, illustrated by Craig Orbeck. Orbeck. So while before we start, so let's take the title The Can Man and look at the cover. And remember authors create titles and design the covers. So our mind is already making predictions. And we're thinking about the story by right? what do we notice in this story? So the, what do we notice about the setting? What do we notice about what the people are doing? But then let's bring in our own schema and use all of those things and make a guess, a prediction of what do you think we're seeing here? What do you think? Why do you think the author titled it The Can Man? And let's read on to, to, to find out. So readers, while I'm reading The Can Man today, Make sure you're looking at the pages and thinking about how does each page go together to tell a story about the can man. And what are you noticing along the way? And what can you connect to? The can man. So here's an example. What do you notice? Have you seen this before in the real world? Do you notice birds flying everywhere near trash cans to pick up every scrap? That would be part of your schema. The homeless man slowly pushed his battered shopping cart down the sidewalk. At the corner trash barrel, he stopped and poked through the garbage with his long stick. He leaned into the barrel and dug out an empty soft drink can, which he dropped into his cart. What's he doing? What do you think? Why would he be doing that? Can you make a connection to that? As he approached, as he approached Tim, the man waved. Tim returned the wave with a smile. Almost everyone called the man the can man, but not Tim's parents. We remember when Mr. Peters lived in an apartment, 3C, Tim's mom told him. We used to work at, or he used to work at the auto body shop before he went out of business, and he couldn't find another job. He's been down on his luck for quite a while now. Getting chilly, the man said as he rattled by. Tim looked at the gray sky. It sure is, he said. He zipped his jacket up higher and slipped his hands into his pockets. A few minutes later, Mike whizzed up on his skateboard, his cheeks red from the cold. Want to go skateboarding in the park? He asked. Tim shook his head. Nah, it's no fun always borrowing your board and your brother's old gear. Maybe you'll get your own board for your birthday next week. Tim shrugged. Dad says he won't have any extra money for toys or sports stuff this year. Too many bills to pay. Bomber, Mike said. He kicked away from the steps. I'll see you later. Tim watched his friend speed away. Silently, Tim wished for a skateboard for his birthday, even though he knew wishes don't really come true. Tim knew exactly which board he wanted. He had been eyeing it at overtime sports for months, and now it was going on sale. But even at the reduced price, and with the money, Tim had saved from, the, from his allowance, the board was still too expensive. I need a job, Tim thought, thought glumly, so I can earn money to buy that skateboard. Down the street, the can man threw two more cans into his cart. The empties hit the growing pile, clicking like the coins in Tim's little sister's piggy bank. The sound gave Tim an idea.
early Saturday morning, Tim rushed to get dressed. In the kitchen, he grabbed a pair of rubber gloves and four big plastic bags from under the sink. What are you up to? His mom asked. I have a job to do, Tim said. Then he added with a grin, don't worry, I'll be home in time for lunch. Outside, the cold air raised goosebumps on Tim's arms. He jumped down the stairs and headed for the first trash barrel on the sidewalk. An empty can lay right on top. After checking several more barrels, Tim had filled half a bag. At five cents a can at the Redemption Center, he figured he would have enough money for a skateboard in no time. What are you noticing? What are you thinking? What are you putting together from what's already happened in the story? A few blocks from the park, Tim stopped in to see Jamel at, at Bunnis Bakery. Do you have any empty soft drink cans? Tim asked. I usually save them for the can man, Jamel said. He needs them. I need them too. I'm going to use the money to buy myself a skateboard for my birthday, Tim told Jamel. I'll even work to earn the cans. Well, Jamel hesitated for a few moments. Maybe this one time. I do have some crates you can carry to the back room. It's a deal, Tim replied. After he had moved the crates and collected cans as payment, Tim ran down the street, stopping at every trash barrel store and restaurant. By noon, he had two full bags of cans. He clattered them up the stairs of his building and plopped it down on the top step. Collecting cans was harder than Tim thought it would be. His gloves were sticky and his clothes smelled like the root beer he'd spilled on himself. But the thought of a brand new skateboard made him smile. Very soon, he'd have one of his own. No more borrowing Mike's board. What do you have there? Tim's mom asked when he dragged the bags into the kitchen. They're full of cans for recycling. I'm earning money for a skateboard. Doesn't Mr. Peters usually collect the cans around here? His mom asked. Tim nodded uneasily. Yeah, but I'm only going to take them until my birthday. Well, you can't keep them in here, his mom said. Take them to the basement and then wash up for lunch. Tim knew it was no use arguing, so he bumped the bags downstairs to the basement. They crackled and clanked with every step. Sunday after church, Tim hurried from one stinky trash barrel to the next, collecting empty cans. For the rest of the week, he had to wait until after school. Tim knew the can man always took the same route, so he started in the opposite direction. That way, he got to some of the trash barrels before the can man did. On Saturday, Tim awoke to icy drizzle squiggling down his window. With a groan, he dragged himself out of his warm bed and into the kitchen. Tim's dad patted him on the shoulder. Sorry, Tim, he said. It looks like you'll have to stay indoors today. But this is my last chance to collect cans. Tim protested. I can't let a little rain stop me. His dad looked out the window. Okay. But don't stay outside too long. On the sidewalk, Tim poked through a few trash barrels. The rain made the garbage smell even worse than usual, and there wasn't a single can to be found. Keeping his face down to shield it from the cold rain, Tim ran toward the next trash barrel, and whoomp. Tim jerked up his head. Oh, sorry, he exclaimed. You okay, kid? The can man asked. 
Yeah, sure. Tim looked into the cart. All he saw was an old bucket of paint and a few empty soft drink cans. The rain pinged on them hollow, hollowly. Haven't found many cans lately, the can man said, poking his stick into the trash barrel. How are you doing? I've seen you out collecting. I have seven bags full at home. Seven, the man said, his eyes wide. My birthday is tomorrow, Tim explained. I'm going to use the money to buy a skateboard. What are you collecting for? The can man shrugged. Wouldn't mind a new coat before the snow starts flying. Tim swallowed. Oh. Well, kid, see you around. The can man pushed his cart down the sidewalk his ripped jacket flapping open with every step. When the rain stopped, Tim called Mike. Then Tim dragged his bags of can from the basement to the front of his building. He sat on the steps to wait. Mike rolled up on his skateboard. Looks like you'll have enough for a board once you turn, turn in these cans, he said. Tim nodded. I guess so. The boys looked up as the clatter of the can man's cart came toward them. The can man stopped at the bottom of the stairs. You need help with your bags? Okay, Tim said. They loaded the bags into the cart and the can man pushed it while Tim and Mike kept the pile from toppling over. At the redemption center, it took a long time for Tim and Mike to push all the cans into the machine. Tim collected his coins in a paper bag he had brought along. By the time the boys were done depositing the cans, the can man had left. Tim looked outside. Small flakes of snow were sprinkling down from the sky, lightly dusting the parking lot. He shook the bag that held his money. The coins rattled like a cart full of empty cans. Suddenly, Tim headed outside. Hey, where are you going? Mike called after him. Tim ran and caught up with the can man holding out the bag of coins. Tim said breathlessly, the money, here, the money's for you. The can man stared in surprise. But you, you earned it. You worked hard for your money. It's okay, Tim said. I want you to have it. The can man blinked a few times as though snowflakes had blown into his eyes. Thanks, kid. What's your name anyway? Tim, Tim said. Thanks, Tim. My name's Joe Peters, the can man said, smiling. I know, Tim said. My mom and dad remember you from when you lived in our building. The can man's smile faded. Oh, that was a long time ago, he sighed. Then he shook the bag of coins. Thanks again. You're welcome, Tim said. When he got home, Tim plunked down on the front steps of his building so he wouldn't get a skateboard for his birthday, but somehow it didn't matter that much anymore. The next day, wearing new birthday jeans, Tim wandered outside to wait for Mike. On the top step, Tim's foot bumped into a large plastic bag. It was tied closed with long string attached to an empty root beer can. Can Tim lightly kicked the bag. Something was in it. He untied the string and peeked inside. A skateboard, he gasped. Tim slowly ran his hands over the painted wood and spun the wheels. The skateboard wasn't new, but it was fixed up with fresh coat of paint and oiled wheels. It even had his name painted neatly across the bottom. Just then, Tim heard the rattle of the can man's cart. As he approached, the can man looked up and waved. Happy birthday, Tim, he called. Grinning, Tim waved back with his new skateboard. Thanks, Mr. Peters. Thanks a lot.